Hello again. In the previous video, I designed a water tank system and also wrote a simple program to control the field valve. In this video, I'll extend my program to control the discharge valve and show the current and desired levels on the two digital displays. During the video, I'll show you how to use a scale and on a scale functions. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to receive the latest and the greatest content I will be posting through the channel. Okay, in the previous video, I return this program to open and close the field valve. Similarly, I can use this logic for the discharge valve. But in this video, I wanna use the first potentiometer to control the discharge valve. Remember, the potentiometer generates a voltage between 0 and 10 volts. Also, the discharge valve is controlled by a voltage between 0 and 10 volts. So, I only need to use a simple move in a structure. The virtual PLC receives this voltage at its input and converts it to an integer number between 0 and 27,648. Then, the move in a structure moves that to this output directly. And according to the previous videos, the PLC will generate a voltage between 0 and 10 volts, which can open and close the discharge valve. Now, let's write a program to receive the analog signal from the level meter to calculate and display the current level. Remember, during the video number 14, I wrote a function for this purpose with the floating point instructions. In this video, I wanna show you an easier method. As you can see below the basic instructions, there are some predefined functions. Let me find the scale and unscale functions under the standard library. Well, let me open the help window to see more details about the scale function. Here we can see the mathematical formula, the data type of the inputs and outputs of the scale function, and so on. Note that the scale function receives an integer number and gives us a real number. It works such as the function which was created in the video number 14. Now let's use that to receive the level meter signal and convert it to a real number between 0 and 300 centimeters. I need to connect the first input to the level meter, IW30. As you can see, the level meter tag has not appeared here. Why? To solve this problem, I need to open the symbols table and change its data type. Note that the first input of the scale function, FC105, receives an integer number. Well, as you see, Semantic Manager has added the scale function, FC105, to my project. Now, let me open the symbols table. I need to change the data type of the level meter input from word to integer format. Similarly, let's change the data type of the two analog inputs which are connected to the two potentiometers. As you can see, now I can connect the level meter tag to the IN input of the scale function without any error. 
Okay, let's continue. If you remember from the previous video, the low and high limits of the water inside the tank are 0 and 300 centimeters. It should be entered in real format. Finally, the last input is used to select the signal type. It's either bipolar or unipolar. The 11 meter signal is unipolar, so I need to connect the last input to a false logic. As you know, the result of this part of my program is always false. On the other side, a word address of memory is used for the first output. The second output gives us the water level in real format. Well, here is an error. I need to change the data type of this memory address from double integer to real format. Now I want to show this number on the first digital display. Remember, the selected format for this address is real and it's not suitable for the two digital displays which receive integer numbers. Here, let me show you a simple technique using the unscale function. This function receives a real number and gives us an integer number. Based on this formula, if I select the unipolar signal mode and also these numbers at its high and low limits, then the unscale function converts the data type of its input without changing its scale. You can hit this page of the head window to learn more details about the unscale function. Now let me use the unscale function to convert the data type of this memory address. Well, the output of the unscale function is an integer number. I need to select this data type for the outputs, which are connected to the two digital displays. All right, the third network receives the level meter signal, converts that to a real number between 0 and 300 centimeters, and then converts that to an integer number, which can be read by the first digital display. Similarly, let's write a program to select the desired level using the second potentiometer and shows its value on the second digital display. If you remember from the previous video, the second potentiometer generates a bipolar voltage between minus 10 and 10 volts. So the last input of the second scale function should be connected to a true logic.
Well, I finished the programming step. Now let's download that to the virtual PLC, which is connected to the designed water tank system in the factory I/O software. Okay, as you can see, the first network can open the field valve 50% and close it completely. Let's modify the program to open the field valve completely. Well, based on the second network, I can use the first potentiometer to control the discharge valve. Okay, as you can see, the third network, this is the level meter signal and converts that to a real number between 0 and 300 centimeters. Then this number is converted to an integer number and you can see that on the first digital display. Finally, based on the last network, I can use the second potentiometer to select my desired level and display it on the second digital display. Okay, with this program, I can control the level of water manually. I mean, an operator is needed to open and close the valves and check the level of water continually. For example, now the desired level is 254, and I need to use the control box to change the level of water.
Now the client and desired level are close together. In the next videos, I'll explain and use some methods to control the level of water automatically. Thanks so much for watching this video. Take care. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.